Brain of Britain, the nationwide general knowledge contest, chaired by Russell Davis. Hello, thank you for that warm welcome and for joining us for the final of Brain of Britain 2022. The four contenders who've made it unscathed through heats and semi-finals are here to find out which of them will be taking home our handsome silver trophy as this year's Brain of Britain champion. Let's meet our four finalists one more time. Hi, I'm Marianne Fairthorn. I'm a quantitative developer from London. Hello, I'm Isabel Hewitt, a volunteer librarian from Goxhill in Lincolnshire. Hi, I'm Emma Laslett, a charity worker from Mervyn Keynes. Hello, I'm Sarah Trevathan, an environment and safety consultant originally from Cornwall, now living in Manchester. You all deserve congratulations before we even start for getting this far in what's been a tremendously competitive series. And in case you were wondering, yes, we think this is the first ever all-woman final of Brain of Britain. And since that makes it... Yes. <laughs> anyway, it's very good to see the four of you again, and the best of luck. The rules are the same as they've been for all the contests you've won thus far. We'll lose no more time in getting the 2022 final underway with your opening question, Marianne Fairthorne. Disputed questions on truth, the Summa Contra Gentiles and the unfinished but influential Summa Theologica are all works by which 13th century Italian priest and philosopher? Thomas Aquinas. Yes. By Timothy was the catchphrase of which radio detective created by Francis Durbridge and first broadcast in 1938? Paul Temple. It was. Which chemical element was the first metal to be smelted, the first to be cast in a mould, and the first to be made into an alloy? Copper? Yes. Which commonly used American slang word derives from the early 20th century third-person singular present tense of the Italian word capire, meaning understand? Capiche? Capiche, yes. In 2020, which entrepreneur announced the name of his new baby with the singer Grimes was X A E diphthong A hyphen 12? Elon Musk. Yes. Five in a row and a bonus point to you. Well done. <laughs> That's what we call throwing down a challenge as we go to Isabel Heward's turn. In film and television drama, which Roman emperor has been portrayed by Charles Lawton, Peter Ustinov and Christopher Biggins? Nero. Yes, in The Sign of the Cross, Quo Vadis and I, Claudius, respectively. Malawan was the second married surname of which British author? Agatha Christie. Dame Agatha Christie is right. A Chancellor of the Exchequer in Clement Attlee's post-war government was obliged to resign after informally revealing to a journalist some of his budget tax changes, which appeared in the evening newspapers before he'd finished his budget speech. Which Chancellor was that? Morrison. It wasn't, I'm afraid, no. Sarah Trevathan? Maudlin? No. Marianne Fairthorne. Hugh Dalton. Hugh Dalton is the right answer. Well done, yes. Emma Laslett, which W-shaped constellation in the night sky is named for the mother of Andromeda in Greek mythology? Cassiopeia. Yes. St. Luke is credited with authorship of two books of the New Testament, the Gospel of St. Luke, and which other? Acts. Acts of the Apostles is right, yes. Which American astronomer and science fiction novelist who died in 1996 presented the popular television science series Cosmos in the 1980s and was a leading figure in the effort to secure funding for the search for extraterrestrial life forms? Carl Sagan. Yes. The chemical element ytterbium, a silvery white metal of the lanthanide series, takes its name from a locality in which country? Sweden. Yes, Itobi is a town in Sweden. The bluebird that forms the symbol for the social media app Twitter 
actually has a name. What is it? Larry. Larry T. Bird, five in a row for you two. It's going to be one of those finals. And over to Sarah Trevathan now. Based on a novel by Thomas Harris, which American psychological horror film directed by Jonathan Demme won five Academy Awards in 1992? The Silence of the Lambs. That's the one. There is one animal species of which every individual currently kept in any zoo anywhere in the world is in fact on loan from China. Which animal is that? The giant panda? It is the giant panda, yes. Bemoaning the loss of Britain's grassroots culture to creeping Americanization, the uses of literacy, aspects of working class life, is a 1957 work of cultural theory by which academic, whose expert testimony had a decisive effect on the Lady Chatterley's lover obscenity trial? Chesterton. Mm, no. Um, Isabel Hewitt. Richard Hoggart. Richard Hoggart is right. The father of the writer Paul and the late news quiz chairman Simon. Richard Hoggart argued at the <coughs> Chatterley trial that D.H. Lawrence's novel was moral and even Puritan and merely repeated words one could hear on any building site. <laughs> and very occasionally on Radio 4. <laughs> End of round one. Here are the scores. Sarah Trevathan, two. Isabel Heward, three. Emma Laslett, six. Marianne Fairthorn, seven. <laughs> OK, Marianne, we're back to you. And here's music by the French composer Camille Saint-Saëns, inspired by an artistic and literary genre that shows people dancing with the figure of death or with skeletons. I'd simply like you to name this musical poem. Dance Macabre. Yes. Which New York thoroughfare, starting in Lower Manhattan at the corner of Battery Park and running north for over 30 miles through the towns of Yonkers and Sleepy Hollow, follows a trail laid down by the Wegwaskeek people? Broadway? Yes. Observing Sharia law, what word is typically omitted from the NATO phonetic alphabet in countries where alcohol consumption is forbidden. Whiskey. Whiskey. It's usually replaced by alternative words beginning with the same letter, such as Washington or white. In the guise of the chaotic Cornley Polytechnic Drama Society, which theatre company staged the West End shows The Play That Goes Wrong, Peter Pan Goes Wrong, and Magic Goes Wrong, as well as the BBC One sitcom The Goes Wrong Show? Mischief. Yes, the Mischief Theatre Company, yes. Beginning with the line, My story is much too sad to be told, which Cole Porter song from the 1930s was nominated for a 2022 Record of the Year Grammy Award in a version by Tony Bennett and Lady Gaga? Miss Otis Regrets? No. Good guess, Emma Laslett? Uh, Chit to Cheek. No. Any more Cole Porter songs upcoming? No. Yes, Isabel Heward. Begin the begin. No, no. No, it was I Get a Kick Out of You. And in the end, it <coughs> lost to the song Leave the Door Open by Silk Sonic. Isabel Heward, despite being very talented in their respective fields, the Welsh-born drummer Owen Wynne Evans and the Polish-born portrait painter Thomas Schaffernacker are both better known in what role? Um, acting in adverts. Mm, no. Sarah Trevathan. Weather forecast. They are weathermen, weather presenters, yes. Emma Laslett, we come to you. Which BBC News programme, originally presented by John Craven, celebrated its 50th anniversary in 2022? Newsround. 
New Zealanders Right launched in 1972 with the aim of forming a news-watching habit in children. Charles Thompson IV, who performs under the name Black Francis, is best known as the frontman of which American alternative rock band of the 80s and early 90s? Out of time, I fear. Sarah Trevathan? The Pixies. The yes. Pixies is right. Sarah Trevathan, your question. After the job was passed on by his colleague Ridley Scott, the in-house BBC production designer Raymond Cusick created what familiar characters whose movement he demonstrated by sliding a pepper pot across a table? The Daleks. Yes. Which 18-mile stretch of England's Jurassic Coast features in the title of a novel by Ian McEwan, published in 2007? Out of time. Uh, Isabel Hewitt. Chesil Beach. On Chesil Beach <coughs> is the title of the book. Chesil Beach is the answer, yes. End of another round. Isabel Hewitt, four. Sarah Trevathan, five. Emma Laslett, seven. Marianne Fairthorne, 11. <laughs> and with the contest in that tense state, it's time to let our finalists have a quick breather and work as a team for a few minutes. This is where a listener gets the chance to win a prize if they beat the brains. By tradition, the incumbent Brain of Britain gets to set the questions for the final, meaning that we have Carl Whelan, the 2021 champion, to thank for the teasers we're about to put to the panel. So put your heads together, please, and see if you can come up with the answers to Carl's questions, which are both movie-related. Here's the first one. Kenneth Branagh broke his Oscar duck earlier this year when he won the Best Original Screenplay Award for his film Belfast. His record now stands at one win from eight nominations in seven categories. One of his nominations in 1996 was for Best Adapted Screenplay. Which film did he receive that nomination for? What's that going to be? Here's much to do about nothing. Was that? Was it 86? Yeah. Uh, or did Emma Thompson? Do the screenplay for that. No, I'm pretty sure he. Yeah, it sounds yeah. reasonable. Yeah. yeah. Much to do about nothing? Nope. Sorry, it was Hamlet. Oh. We, and it was yes. perhaps a rather su surprising nomination <coughs> as he barely changed anything from the original play. So <laughs> the, the award was effectively won by one W. Shakespeare. <laughs> anyway, here's Carl's second question, and it concerns the Oscars again. One of the nominated films for Best Adapted Screenplay at the 2021 Awards credited eight writers. Can you tell me which name is missing from this list? Anthony Hines, Dan Swimmer, Peter Bainham, Erica Rivinoya, Dan Mazer, Jenna Friedman, and Lee Kern. Well, isn't Peter Bain, doesn't he work with um, Amanda Iannucci? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, yes. Oh, could it be the David Copperfield one if it was like a year or so ago? Cause that, that sounds oh. right, because that was... That that was that, yes. yeah. Be... yeah, that makes mm. sense. Amanda Yanucci? Nope, I'm no. afraid not. It was Sasha Baron Cohen <laughs> for Borat 2, or, yeah. to give it its full title, Borat, subsequent movie film, delivery of prodigious bribe to American regime for make benefit once glorious nation of Kazakhstan which also now holds the record for the longest film title ever nominated for an Academy Award. So thank you for your questions, Carl, and congratulations on beating the brains fairly soundly. And in a very few minutes, we'll know who's going to succeed you as Brain of Britain champion. So please accept our congratulations both for today's questions and for your splendid victory last year. From our radio theatre audience, you earn this true champion's round of applause. relaxation then. Let's resume our final with the scores finally poised and the next round starts with you again, Marianne. Established as a small settlement in the early Bronze Age, the city of Elba became an important trading centre and seat of power in the ancient world. Its remains are in which present-day Asian country? Lebanon. 
Not the Lebanon, I fear. No, Syria, Javadan? Syria? Syria, yes. It's about 35 kilometers southwest of Aleppo. Isabel Heward, music for you now. In October 2022, Liverpool was chosen to host the first Eurovision Song Contest to be held in the UK for 25 years. Part of the city's rich musical heritage is a soul band formed in the 1970s. When you've heard one of their biggest hits, I'd just like you to name them. I can't get by without you I need you more each day The way I feel about you Leaves nothing more to say The real thing? The real thing is right. Quote, quadruped, graminivorous, 40 teeth, namely 24 grinders, 4 eye teeth and 12 incisive, sheds coat in the spring, in marshy countries sheds hoofs too. This is part of a definition of which animal given by a pupil of Thomas Gradgrind in Charles Dickens' Hard Times? Reindeer. No. Sarah Trevathan. A cow? No. Marianne Fethorn. Horse? It's a horse. Oh, yes, indeed it is. Demonstrating Greg Ryan's obsession with cold, hard facts. He gives many more than that, I have to tell you. Emma Laslett. What game that uses mobile devices with GPS to locate, capture, train, and battle virtual Pokemon creatures, which appear as if they are in the player's real-world location, took the world by storm when it was introduced in 2016? Pokemon Go. Pokemon Go. In a series of films of the late 1930s and early 1940s, Basil Rathbone and Nigel Bruce played which pair of characters? Holmes and Watson. Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson is right, yes. In American politics, what is an October surprise? An impeachment? No. Marianne Fairthorne? It's a piece of news um, that's released just before an election. It's an unexpected announcement or development that potentially shifts the voting in a presidential election made just in time to win some extra votes in early November. So you're right there. Sarah Trevathan, on National Writing Day in 2019, which author tweeted, Today I wore a jacket I hadn't worn for two years. In the pocket I found my green leather pen case containing the pen that wrote his dark materials. I knew it would come back to me. Philip Pullman. So Philip Pullman, yes. Not everyone was impressed. One Twitter user responded, Oh, look at me, I've got hundreds of jackets. Which <laughs> just shows how very, very ill-natured Twitter can be. Um, Wallace Shawn, Timothy Chalamet, Justin Timberlake and Jesse Eisenberg are the last four actors to star as neurotic, stammering, sexually awkward New York intellectuals in films written and directed by which man? Woody Allen? Yes, Woody Allen. A group of right-wing think tanks known as the Nine Entities, which includes the Taxpayers' Alliance, the Adam Smith Institute, and the Global Warming Policy Foundation, are all based in the same house on which Westminster Street? Tufton Street. Yes, 55 Tufton Street. Interestingly, the fictional Conservative MP for Limeswold, invented by Private Eye in the 1980s, was called Sir Bufton Tufton. <laughs> Which uh, French term used in English to describe young people of wealth and fashion literally means gilded youth? of time. Emma Laszlo does. Jeanne Doré. Can't quite give you that. No. No. No more office. It, it, it's very close, but the, the, the word is jeunesse for youth. Jeunesse Doré is the answer, and that's the end of a round, and here are the interesting scores. Isabel Hewitt has five. Emma Laszlo and Sarah Trevathan, nine each, and Marianne Fairthorn, 13. <laughs> Thank you.
And it's to Marianne we return for what must be, I fear, the last round of this contest. The president of Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky, was known in what capacity in his native country before he entered politics? He's a comedian. Yes. He created and starred in a hit TV series, Servant of the People, in which an ordinary man finds he has become president. And his, his 2019 presidential campaign grew from that role. Winning the main event at the World Championship a record seven times, Jonas Neubauer was arguably the greatest ever player of which classic video game, which he began playing in the late 1980s? Tetris. It was Tetris, yes. In 2020, Professor Bruce Jane posited 11 distinct methods of locomotion including five types of lateral undulation and four of concertina motion that are used by what creatures to propel themselves? Snakes. It is snakes, yes. Amy Winehouse released just two studio albums in her lifetime. What was the title of the first one? Back in Black? No. Uh, Sarah Trevathan. Frank. Frank was the first one, yes. Released in 2003, and Back to Black followed in 2006. Isabel Hewitt caught life from the CBBC series Horrible Histories. You'll be back from the stage musical The Hamilton. And Eight Songs for a Mad King by Peter Maxwell Davis are all pieces of music sung from the perspective of which monarch? George III. Yes, has to be, doesn't it? George III. Beatrice Harrison was a virtuoso on which musical instrument which she played on one of the BBC's first live outside broadcasts, duetting with a nightingale in her own garden? A cello. Yes. Which name is shared, both surname and given name, by a character first seen in Shaw's play Pygmalion and that rare thing, a fully qualified English matador of the 1970s? Henry Higgins. Henry Higgins. The matador, having survived the bullring, died in a hang gliding accident, jumping off a hill 200 feet high. In which play by Aristophanes is Brekekekex, coax, coax, a repeated refrain from the chorus? The frogs. Yes. Bent double like old beggars under sacks is the opening line of which First World War poem by Wilfred Owen? Anthem for Doomed Youth. No. Emma Laslett. Dulcet Coromast. Dulcet de Coram Est is the right answer. And it's your turn. Music for you, indeed. And you're about to hear a work by Mozart, as recorded by the BBC Philharmonic in June 2021, from a concert at Media City in Salford. <laughs> That symphony, number 41 in C major, has a nickname, which is that of a key figure in the ancient Roman pantheon. What name is that? Jupiter. It is Jupiter, yes. Which German physicist discovered that there is a direct proportionality between the voltage applied across a conductor and the resultant electric current? Ohm. Ohm, it is now known as Ohm's law, yes. Ten sex deciliard, 10,000 sexdecillion and 10 duotrigintillion are all less catchy alternatives to the name coined by nine-year-old Milton Sirota for what number? Google. A Google. It's written as one, followed by 100 zeros. A Boeing B-17 bomber was the title subject of which 1990 film? Black Hawk Down? No. Sarah Trevathan. Memphis Bell. Is the correct answer. Sarah Trevathan, the hardest working man in show business and the godfather of soul, are nicknames that have been attached to which American singer who died in 2006? James Brown. You're right. 
1981, which 12-year-old boy, the son of a vice chairman of the BBC's Board of Governors, wrote a strongly worded letter to the Today program threatening legal action if he did not receive the 18 pounds he demanded for having been interviewed. Jacob Rees-Mogg? It was, yes. <laughs> the Evening Standard reported the story next to a picture of the future business secretary standing outside the Bank of England, wearing a monocle and an outsized overcoat. Between the 1930s and the 1980s, the personnel files of BBC employees suspected of politically subversive activity were stamped with what symbol? Sometimes thought to refer to the melody of the socialist anthem, the red flag. A tree? A Christmas tree? Tannenbaum? A, a, oh, yes, you've got all the details. A Christmas tree? In reality, the symbol was an upwards facing green arrow indicating that the individual should be referred to a higher level. But uh, you're right. In the Thomas the Tank Engine books, what colour engine is Henry? Green. Henry, the green engine. Yes. The PSOE, founded in 1879, is a major political party of the left in which European country? Spain. Spain is right. It stands for Partido Socialista Obrero Español, the Spanish Socialist Workers' Party, and that's five in a row in a bonus mark. <laughs> What a way to finish a contest, because with that question, we've reached the end of the 2022 final of Brain of Britain, and the result is as follows. Isabel Heward, nine points. Emma Laslett, 13. Marion Fairthorne, 16. Sarah Trevathan, 17. <laughs> Meaning that Sarah Trevathan, with that final sprint, becomes the 69th official Brain of Britain. Very well done indeed. Brain of Britain will return in 2023 for its 70th season, no less. I do hope you'll be listening, and thank you for joining us this year. From our new champions, Sarah Trevathan and all of us here, goodbye. <laughs>